In our last example of graphing a system of linear inequalities, we'll have four inequalities. It may seem a little scary that we have four, but don't worry about these last two. We'll see how they affect the graph in a second. So we'll do one at a time. x plus y is less than or equal to 7. Notice for x plus y is less than or equal to 7, the x and y intercept of the line x plus y equals 7 happens to both be 7. So let's put an x-intercept at 7 and a y-intercept at 7. And now we'll draw a line. Again, this is the line x plus y equals 7. And now let's do our test points. We only need one. Uh, the origin is always a good one to pick. We'll put in 0 in for x and 0 in for y. If we were to put in 0 in for x and 0 in for y, we'd get 0 is less than or equal to 7, which is true. So since the origin is below the line and it made it true, we're going to shade below this line. That's good for now. Okay, good. So now let's do our next line. 2x plus y equals 8. Notice when y is 0, x would be 4. And when x is 0, y would be 8. This will also be a solid line because of the equal to. So let's connect those two points. And this is the line 2x plus y equals 8. Excellent. Now let's also find uh, where we need to shade. Again, this is where we pick a test point. We'll also pick the origin. So if I pick the origin, we'll put in 0 and for x and 0 and for y. If I put in 0 and for x and for y, notice we'll get 0 is less than or equal to 8, which is true. Since 0, 0 is below the line and it made it true, we'll shade below. Okay. Now let's figure out what these last two inequalities say. Notice x equals 0 happens to be the y-axis. And to say x is greater than or equal to 0, that means we want everything to the right. y equals 0 happens to be the x-axis. To say y is greater than or equal to 0 means we want everything above the y-axis. So where do those two overlap? They happen to overlap in the first quadrant. So whenever you see x and y are both greater than or equal to 0, that means they're referring to just the first quadrant. So what that means for us is instead of having to draw two more lines, we're going to restrict our final answer to the first quadrant. Notice we have to figure out where they both overlap. And notice they both overlap in this region here. Again, restrict it just to the first quadrant. Be sure to understand that your final answer can never ever cross a line. So make sure you never color in, for instance, this little triangular patch here or this triangular patch here. It should never cross a boundary line. These two inequalities are the most common types of inequalities that you will see in a typical Math 1250 or 1470 class um, because you deal with applications of linear inequalities in those classes. Now it's not to say that it can't appear in any other quadrant, however the first quadrant happens to be the most popular one for those two classes. But that's it.